and welcome to So What If I Sew, I'm Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. Now I had to take a break from Vlogmas due to personal issues and stress levels and everything. However, my MA coursework is done, I'm just finishing my last day of work for the year today and so I've got some really fun stuff to share with you guys. So today we are talking all things Christmas outfit. Now this year Adam and I are doing Christmas here, just the two of us being super COVID safe, but also it's exciting and this is probably going to be our last Christmas in this house. So you know it's it's really, I'm, I'm excited. Um, and we are combining some family traditions. So my family we tend to not like dress up dress up, but we dress up for opening presents and for Christmas Day and we make an effort we're generally a little bit sparkly and you know because um, my dad takes lots of very high definition photos of us Adam's family tend to be in pajamas to open presents which is also completely fine um so a compromise is that we're going to be in our pajamas to open our presents but then I'm going to put on my beautiful Christmas Day outfit for when we FaceTime families and eat and generally that makes me feel more Christmassy. However, I would be very, very silly indeed if I didn't take this opportunity to make my Christmas Day outfit. So let me show you what the plan is. So uh, for the bottom half, I will be making some of these McCall's collots, which came in the, oh God, August, September edition of Love Sewing. Anyway, I've been meaning, I think, I think August, because I've been meaning to make these for ages. Because um, I don't normally wear collots, but also I think, so I think there's going to be a few pattern adjustments I want to make with this to make them suit me because basically these look and I think from hearing other people talk about them they're a tiny bit drop waisted or they sit slightly lower whereas I need these to be high waisted because on me if it's drop waisted it will look bizarre so I'm going to do some measurements and adjust um, and basically make sure that I might just add like an inch or two at the top uh, to make sure that they fit me exactly on my waist and I'm really excited actually I've never owned these they're elastic backed as well so they will allow for a Christmas Day expansion which is just inevitable uh, and it's you know not fussy to get on and off and they have pockets also dream I will be making these out of this oh isn't it beautiful it is from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn it is like a viscose uh, oh god what is it it's, it's like a viscose shelly, I think. Anyway, it's stunning. I have got two meters of it. The pattern says I need more. I don't think I do. Uh, I'm just going to go for it, really. Um, and if they're shorter, they're shorter. Because I'm the thing is, I'm working on the premise that I'm five foot two, and most of these patterns are made for somebody who's about five six minimum. So normally, when it comes to hemming stuff, you know, if this is like ankle grazing, it's going to be like floor length on me. So, you know, woo for being short. But this fabric is stunning. I adore it. I'm so excited to use it. I got it in the Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn Black Friday sale. And I'm so excited to use it. So these go together. Lovely. On the top half, uh, I'll be revisiting one of my favourite pattern designers, Tammy Handmade. I will be making it, it's a lovely little cami, like the Ogden cami, but I really liked, she's made it out of like a silk and I wanted to make sure I was using a pattern that was equal to such lightweight fabrics because I am using this. I'm in love with this fabric, it is the most beautiful thing I've ever felt in my life. Um, I think, I can't even remember, it feels like silk but it definitely isn't. It's like a sand brushed something. But it is, I will find it in the comments below, like in the description below, and I will tag it and everything. It's from the rag shop. And Steph actually sent me this for free with no expectation to post or anything. It actually, like, this is not the kind of, like, this is not gifted or an ad or anything. Literally, I was trying to buy it on the site. I was trying to buy a remnant. And somebody bought it as I was putting in my payment details. And I was absolutely gutted. So I told Steph. And then she said to me, basically... Uh, let me have a look and see if I've got any more in. So I was expecting her to like message me and say yes or no, basically. And then it turned up. It just turned up on the doorstep as a sort of nice thank you, which was very sweet. Um, and yeah, so I was blown away because I really wasn't expecting it. And it is a bolt end, so uh, it's got one uneven... Is it this one? Yeah, it's got one uneven edge that sort of curves in. But again, not a problem. So I'm going to, originally I was going to make a skirt, but actually I'm going to make a cami out of it because I'll wear it constantly. And then I'll look for one other nice top or maybe a very short skirt pattern. Um, but I love it. So this as a cami with 
this is culottes I think it's gonna go super well together it's like um this is like sparkly so I think it's like kind of cute and Christmassy and this is just feels oh it's gonna feel so nice on Christmas Day and this is actually it doesn't look like it would be but this is actually fully opaque so I won't even need to line the culottes which is wonderful. So the first job is to print out my PDF and assemble it. I'm gonna start with the cami and then move to the culottes and I'll do a video like that split um, and I will talk you through as much as possible as we go. Good morning lovely people and it is culotte day, so I'm really, really excited. Um, now, I have just realised, I've been sitting in bed thinking about this, hence the tea and pyjamas. Um, I've been thinking about this, and I don't know if I've actually got any elastic. Now, I've definitely got, like, waistband elastic, but I don't know if I've got any thick, like, trouser band elastic, and if I do, it's probably going to be bits and pieces, so I may have to, like, stitch my elastic together, which probably won't work. So, I'm going to have a think about how that's going to work, but at least I'm going to get it cut out and sewn. Uh, today so right now we're gonna go do pattern layout I'm gonna add an inch or two depending on the measurement from crotch to waist to make sure it hits my high waist like proper um, and I also may continue in the line so for example if it uh, if the difference shapes in like that I'll continue that if it's square because of the elastic great fantastic then we can just take it up and make sure it hits my high waist perfectly because otherwise it'll look really strange on me. So first plan is to lay out the pattern pieces, cut them out and measure that gap and then we will iron the fabric, cut it out. So let's do those bits now. I'm working with that stunning kind of viscose, I think it's a viscose Shelley and um, I'm really excited but it's very, very slippery so I'm gonna use a lot, no pattern weights today all pins, actually pattern weights and pins potentially, because it's gonna move a lot. So that will be my challenge. But Adam's got some Star Trek on downstairs, so I'm going to watch that with my tea and let's get going. lovely people um I have cut up my pattern pieces hilariously there's like models a through e on this one and a up to e are on the same piece and then d for some reason is on a separate piece and I cut that one out first by without realizing but not a huge issue because from the looks of it d is just a lined version but the pieces are actually the same so we'll be fine anyway obviously as you can see I don't really have enough fabric or so I thought because I suddenly went this is an American pattern and I'm making a size 12, which is a 26 inch waist and 36 inch hip, which actually is my measurement, so I shouldn't have to change it. However, in my experience, American patterns are made for much, much taller people than me. So what I just did, which is hysterical, is the crotch line is marked to the pattern. So I lay on the pattern, matching up the kind of crotch line and waistline, and lay down, because obviously I can't currently fit them out my fabric. And then Adam marked where my toes were, and my ankles and luckily my ankles were here so that means I can take I'm gonna say three so I can have an inch hem three inches off the bottom of each leg which will then allow me to get the relevant pattern pieces out that I need so today I am exceptionally glad that I am very very short and that American patterns are made for taller people so I am yeah I'm very very happy about this so let's get on and make those adjustments
everything is cut out with some slightly creative cutting um, and I'm just going to talk you guys through the first, it's like the first two steps but we might as well do it all in order. So we have our two front pieces that I have, hang on, let's show them to you the right way. Uh, this is wrong side out here and I have pinned them together at the centre seam so we're going to sew along. Oh, this fabric's slippy. I'm really, I've already got a very sharp needle in the machine, like a very fine one. I'm very, very glad. So, here we go. I've pinned it together along the centre front seam. Lovely. And then we've got a series of pleats to make. So there's two pleats, like there's one centre pleat that goes over the front seam. And then there's two like mini, yeah, like mini pleats, one at each side that give you a little bit of shaping on the waist. So we will sew all of those in. I'm, I'm afraid they're not super easy to show you, but I've snipped tiny, tiny marks into where they all need to be. So there we go, that's one pleat which will go here to here. And the pleats all go following to the outside, but we pull the fabric towards the middle. And then this pleat, I think we bring both this line here into the center fold to make a really big pleat like that and obviously the pleats on the inside so on the outside we get this nice almost paper bag-ish effect that brings shaping to the waist so I'm gonna put the iron on on low heat I think for this um, we'll do the pleats and then we will reconvene once the front of the garment has been pleated Lots of you will have this pattern, so I thought I would clear something that I found a little bit, um, well, I don't know, the instructions I just thought, really? And I couldn't see how it worked. So, we've sewed the crotch line together on our front. Then, I don't know if you guys can see, we've sewn, there's a stitching line marked on the pattern with like two circles at either end. We've stitched that together. I thought we folded it to the middle, we don't. We stitch this together and then when we open it out, we get this and you can kind of see that there is then this sort of pleat in here. So what we then do is we take the fabric, this is the wrong side to show you guys, so this is a little fin of a pleat at the moment, and we flatten it out so that the seams line up like that and then we're going to baste along there and it actually hits the pleat marker for the next pleat, okay? So we're going to do that. I'm going to pin these just for the moment and then I'm going to assemble my other pleat because that gets drawn along here and then I'm going to base them in one line because I think that's going to be more secure. But by this big kind of flat pleat in the middle reinforces the crotch seam which helps um, and then you get this sort of this open flare element which will give the waist a really nice shape. So let me do my other pleats and pull them in and then I will stitch them along in one line, press it, and then we'll see what the next step is. So here we are, the pleats are done. Now I'm gonna show you guys, I'm actually really, really proud of these. And there are revealed pockets, cause I was like, surely that's too short, it's not. Cause we'll see the pocket here, which is really cool because obviously pockets are great. Um, but also you can already see the shape that has from the pleats. Like it's gonna look really, really pretty. So very, very excited about this. Uh, the next stage is to attach the pockets. So what we have, is we have a front side pocket which mirrors this shape here, this kind of um, shallow curve. And then we have a back pocket that comes all the way out. So we're gonna attach the front pocket first, right sides to right sides, flip it over. And then we're gonna attach, well we're not even actually going to do that, we're going to attach it there. We're then going to attach the back pocket, again right sides together, and then flip it so that we still see that exposed pocket and then that will be the whole waistline as well covered to there. So, let's get some pockets going. I don't do pockets very often. I really should do them more because I love having them. I'm just not very good at them. They always stick out weirdly in dresses, but these are so built in 
that I'm really excited. Um, I also forgot to tell you guys, this is the first pair of trousers that aren't pyjamas I've ever made in my life. So the actual first pair of trousers for like outside wearing. So I'm quite nervous, but I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. And if this pattern looks good on me, then there is no reason why I can't make a couple, you know, a couple more because culottes are handy. I work in the events industry and sometimes you need to run around a lot and a skirt's not practical. So, you know, this might be the start of a beautiful friendship, but let's do some pockets. There we go, we've got pockets, and I'm actually so chuffed with these, right? So, if I show you guys, it's really hard with this fabric to like, it's the slippiest thing in the world. It's stunning, but it's very slippy. So here we are, pleats, and here's my pocket. Oh, look at that, beautiful. And then it's got, so pocket dips at the front and goes up at the back to form the whole front trousers. I'm already so excited to wear these, like it's gonna be so fun. Um, so the next step is the front waistband. So we need to interface the front waistband, it's a nice flat one. And then, so interface it, and then we fold the edges under, and we're gonna pin the facing slash basically second waistband to it so that it's um, right sides together, flip through, and then we're gonna attach it to the top of the trousers. Hopefully, I'm gonna give these a quick press at the moment. They are a nightmare to keep on the ironing board, honestly. Like, I think I'm gonna to have to weight them down to iron them because they just slip off. The second you take the iron away, they slip off and it's been a source of frustration this morning. <laughs> so, let me cut out some interfacing and we'll get on. waistband is on. I've just popped upstairs, we've just had a nice break, um, cup of tea, watched a Christmas film, feeling very Christmassy in my Christmas hedgehogs today. And now I'm going to sew the back legs, like the back leg pieces, onto the front legs. And I might leave the waistband for when it's light tomorrow, but at least I'll get that on now. And then that will probably be my last bit of sewing for today. Fingers crossed my printer ink arrives tomorrow. Um, so that I can do, um, so I can print the PDF pattern for my top and then I can do that because I've done them the other way around because yeah my printer is completely out of ink which is a nightmare so we'll do that but for now let's get the legs on and then just the waistband like the back elasticated waist to do and welcome to day two of culotte sewing. We are at the finish line basically. All we've got to do, oh sorry, all we've got to do is uh, the elastic, so we need to do the elastic casings, the elastic and then sew up the sides, hem the bottom. So let me show you the garments so far so I can explain a few bits. So here we are, we've got, this is the front piece, and the waistband is attached. The last thing I did last night is understitch both this one and the one at the back. So here you go, you can see the pleats. You see my lovely pockets here. I handed to those. It's so hard to actually show you things on this fabric. Um, I'm really chuffed with this actually. It's really lovely and flat. My pleats are lovely and flat. Like I've never done anything this neat in my life. Um, <laughs> or it's been a while anyway. Then we have the baffling instance that the sides of the trousers are not yet attached, so I'm trying to find the other side, uh, which is rem 
remarkably difficult. Now, here we go. And this is the back. So, it's a lot bigger obviously because it's accommodating hips and also this will be inelastic. So there's a pattern measurement that shows the elastic is being about this long, which is great because that'll cinch in. However, I, I will do that, but I might make it shorter, like I might try them on and make it shorter depending on my waist measurement to really get that lovely high-waisted effect. Uh, but first what we need to do is I need to measure my elastic and so four casings, well three lines, so four casings down here. So it's quite thin elastic and then that will ruche in and then the instructions are absolutely baffling. There's something about facings that makes no sense to me at all. I have no idea. Um, but I also don't think it's especially important. Uh, so I'm just going to ignore it. And <laughs> I don't care. Um, it's all going super well and the instructions are really confusing at this point. They say something about like flipping a facing over the elastic and slip stitching. I don't know because surely the elastic's just going in this lovely casing we've created here and then the foot. No idea. Um, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. So, yeah, we will, we will see. Anyway, so the step after that is that we make sure all the elastic is in. We baste across one end. We pull the elastic fabric down, obviously. We baste it across the other end. And then, finally, we attach the sides of our trousers. So this is the center crotch seam. Uh, so let's match that. And that's that end. So then we will have a lovely, rather voluminous pair of trousers. So they should sit right up here on me because sitting anywhere else would be pointless. When you're five foot two, you need things to hit at your waist because then they make you look tall, which is nice. Obviously, if you don't want to look tall, completely fine. But for me personally, um, I have quite a petite frame and my waist is also a lot smaller than my hips. So if things don't hit on my waist, they look really strange, like, <laughs> like really weird. Uh, so I am very, very excited. So the first job is actually for me to root through my elastic box and try and find, I know I've got some, it's just whether I've got four pieces. So we will see, and then we will sew our casings into this. We will thread our elastic through, and then we'll catch up. Um, I've gone actually a very different way with the elastic and I have done two, I'm just showing all my pins are in, I've done two channels um, instead of four because my elastic was thicker and I've left the top one as like, a, so I, I did three originally but I've left the top one as like a kind of nice paper bag fr frill because I think it looks nicer. So here we go, quite a bit of shrinkage, um, I did my elastic a little bit shorter than the pattern because as I say, the pattern's designed to sit lower, be a little bit looser, and honestly, when I checked the length of the elastic, it was longer than the length of my, my back waist. So I've done it like this, but there's lots and lots and lots of stretch in this, which is what I need um, to get it on and off, but I like it to be quite, like personal preference, I quite like it to be quite tight on the elastic, so that it stays nice and high, and I don't have to think about it all day. I hate things sitting tight on like my lower stomach, but on my waist is not a problem. Here we are, I now am going to baste across the ends to keep the elastic in place and then we are going to sew up the sides of my trousers. I am so excited um, to get that stage done and then we're on to hemming. the culottes are on I love them and there's a reason I'm filming it from here which is that I took three inches off the pattern the pattern is not even meant to be full length I t like as in the version I used I took three inches off the bottom with the intention of hemming for an inch 
Look at this. You can see it pooling around my feet. I'm gonna have to cut three inches or so off it to get it to hit out my, like, even be off the floor. So, whilst these are the most comfortable things, I love my pleats. It sits on the waist really well. My pockets are awesome. But yeah, I, I am just, this is hilarious. So I am going to, um, Adam's gonna help me properly hem them later, but I'm honestly gonna chop just two, three inches off the bottom. Um, because the thing is, if that means they sit just above the floor, then I can hem from there. But right now, like I love how wide the leg is because it does actually look like a skirt. And they feel like pajamas, which is the win. But yeah, it is just, look at this. Enormous legs, absolutely hilariously enormous. But it is going right the way down to my toes and pooling on the floor as I stand. I look quite adorable. So let's get these off on the floor and we'll measure a couple of inches, chop that off the bottom and then we'll see where we are. Welcome to day, oh, I don't even know what day we're on, three of Christmas outfit sewing. Um, and I have finally got printer ink. And what's more, it's in the printer. Oh, um, I've had a busy day so far, a lot of deliveries before Christmas today. I had to go to the osteopath this morning because one of my shoulders was like up here. <laughs> so not too much sewing today. However, what we have managed to do is get the pattern printed. So the next thing I'm gonna do is assemble that, cut out the pieces, um, I've then got some soup stuff to do tonight, but hopefully I'm going to at least get the fabric cut tonight. But we now got to go get, so I'm going to assemble, cut up the PDF so it's ready to go. And then we've got to go pick up our duck for Christmas dinner from the farm shop. So I'm going to do that and then hopefully some fabric cutting tonight. Fingers crossed. Um, this cami top is a really, really quick make. It's super quick. So I'm hoping, I'll cut the fabric tonight, I'll probably get out tomorrow, Christmas Eve. And then I can show you guys my outfit on here and put the video up before Christmas Day. That is the plan. The collot's half is edited and done. That's what I did last night. Um, I spent six hours, no, eight hours yesterday making soup. So it's, it's still got some stuff to go. Um, very, very complex soup to make. Well, not complex, but it's just very time consuming. Um, so I edited all the first half of the footage. So we'll get this done and then I'll be able to show you guys my super exciting Christmas Day outfit. Now. Let's do some pattern assembly. all my fabric is cut out and now we are going to start assembling so we'll assemble the bodice first um i think it's a very very simple pattern this basically i think we're gonna stay stitch even if it's not in the pattern i'm going to because my fabric's incredibly lightweight so i'm gonna put a sharp needle on the machine stay stitch and then it will be facings on and leaving a gap at the top of each triangle that's the basic thing then straps, turn them through, attach them, attach at the sides, hem, done. It is a really, really simple pattern. Um, I don't know how much really I need to explain. 
I may have a chat with you guys when I do the straps, but the only thing I would say is Tammy handmade patterns are stunning, but I find, I think we have a different length torso, so I may have to take a couple of inches off the straps because I did last time for the rear dress. So we'll have a look at that. But yeah, I'm doing my quick uh, talking interludes upstairs because Adam is reading downstairs and I kind of just want him to have that chill time uh, and it doesn't bother me. So fabric is out. Let's get the iron turned on, needle turned over, and we'll just start and I will catch up with you guys around halfway through. Um, I didn't, I just time lapsed all of that because realistically it's a very simple construction and if you would like to find out more about constructing kind of the strappy top style from Tammy Handmade with the facing, check out my rear dress vlog where I go into it in a lot more detail. So here I have my back piece with facing down, sorry, there we go, back piece with facing, front piece with facing and each of them has a little gap up here for the strap to feed through. I stay stitched my neckline as well just because I think it will sit better. So the next job for me I think is going to be shortening the straps because as last time with this construction of top once they're sewn in you can't shorten them um, but in the kind of pinning stage you can. So what I'm going to do is show you guys how we fit a top like this. So we've got our two straps here and first of all what we're going to do is thread them through the gap so we go make sure they're the side out you want them to be so that when this flips over the seam is at the back which means generally that you want to put it seam facing up under the facing so seam facing and then under there takes a bit of a wiggle to get it through there we go lovely Let's pull it through, make sure they stay straight, that's always the trick with straps. What we want to do is thread it through so that only the end, like, or for me about an inch, but only the end is stuck through and the rest of it's hanging down. It's a bit counterintuitive, but once you've done it once or twice it does make sense. So I'm going to do that there, I'm going to leave about a centimetre sticking out the top because most of my shortening will do at the back. So there we go, I've put a pin through that. Now when you're working with straps, again I would do them at the same time on each side, so we'll put both of the front ones in together. I've noticed that somehow I've made my straps fractionally different widths, but I don't care hugely, I don't think it'll be that obvious. So there we go, also this fabric is stunning, it is from the rag shop as I mentioned earlier, and it is the softest thing in the world, it's beautiful, but my goodness is it slippy to work with, like pins fall out of it. That's actually been a theme this video because the fabric I used for my clots was the same. Pins just, yeah, they just drop out as you're working at the desk and I'm like, oh my god, stressful. So here we are. Straps are in. Now, here's the weird bit. I'm going to measure, so I want the V at the top to hit there on me, which is mid bra strap, so I'm going to put a pin there on myself. Then we have the back, which will probably sit at bra strap level, which is again what we want. So I'm going to grab a tape measure. And I'm going to measure over my shoulder. 
using a little bit of shoulder flexibility about there add a bit for the bit that's going to go through the strap and I'm going to take it to the pin plus a bit so that's 12.1 inches just over 12 anyway so let's measure my straps see what we're doing here we go yes so as I thought my straps are 14 which means they're going to be way too long on me so what I'm actually going to do is put a pin in them at the 12 marker and then 12 and a half because that is the bit that will stick out under the opposite facing and we'll do the same on our other strap so I've put a, I've measured and put a pin here to denote where basically the strap will end on me and that will be so half half an inch and that will actually be where it finishes on me and we'll do the same on the other side trying to keep our straps flat making sure the seam is facing up and let's measure again so yeah these straps are over 14 so for me 12 and a half there we go lovely and there we have it so let's just line them up together and then stretch them out seam side up seam side up there and there fab so now we're going to take these through the back piece which is here make sure the back piece is right side to right side and then we're going to thread it through the hole on the back which is where the notches are on the pattern and we just don't sew over that bit basically yeah again if you go and watch the rear dress sew along um, I go into this in quite a lot of detail because it's my first time doing it but it is it's a lovely construction kind of point once you get there and once you get the hang of it it's super easy which I love so I'm gonna pull this through until the pin hits lovely and take the pin out of there pull it through to where the pin was and pin it into the facing like so I now have this big lump off so once I've sewn them on and just double triple checked I will cut this off and finish the end so that it doesn't annoy me and again we're making sure that it is seam side up and let's do the other side so again it goes through here we pull till the pin hits and we just pull that little bit through pin it in place Make sure the seam is still facing up. Lovely. So if I then pull, just test, pull that out. I can see it's the right way around there. And there we go. So let's sew these into place. I love this top already. I had a tiny, tiny mishap just then ironing the very end because I had it on a really low heat earlier. I didn't realize I turned the iron up and uh, I actually, this fabric melts. So if you have this fabric at home, you need to do it with a pressing cloth. I just wasn't thinking and now I have learned my lesson, but I love it. I love the drape. I think it looks really pretty. So now I'm gonna try it on with my culottes and get a few photos before I start doing a few bits for Christmas Day meal. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you like my outfit. I am completely in love. I think they go really well. Um, if you like any of the fabrics in this video, I've done my best to list them below, but a lot of them aren't stocked anymore. So I've at least put the suppliers and I've put both pattern links below as well. 
I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. And I will see you guys on Boxing Day. Have a wonderful Christmas, everybody. And I'll see you all soon.